Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Engine. Now I know this episode's a little late. Um by about a week. It's like I'm I'm trying to do about one episode a week of Space Engine. Uh so it gives time for people to comment and all that. Where where even am I? What is this? Oh, these are galaxies. Anyways, but um I've actually been busy this last week. Um actually doing work this time, not being lazy. But um I was working on actually a Unity project. Um <laughs> Some of you may remember, I don't know, you might, four years ago I started making a game, quote unquote game, uh, it was a space thing, and I got as far as making a playable kind of demo, but it was pretty basic and pretty crappy, and then I kind of gave up on it and it went away. Well, um, one of my friends made a comment that, uh, well, <laughs> actually kind of a story, he was sending me random um, like, links to Steam games, like, really, really weird ones that were, like, obviously made by people, like, very simply, and just really, really low standard games, and he made a joke that I should make, uh, low standard games and sell them on Steam, and I was like, yeah, alright. So, <laughs> I spent a week, and I actually made something playable, uh, I made a, uh, it's a simulator game, it's literally just a go outside simulator where you go outside and walk around in different environments. That's literally it. There's no actual interactive gameplay beyond exploring environments. That's weird. And, um, it's actually kind of cool, uh, honestly, because, I, oh, I saw that. I spent a lot of time on the environments and everything, and each environment has its own, um, like there's Easter eggs hidden in them. There's three per level. Uh, they're usually pop culture references, actually. But, um, I don't know, I was kind of proud of that. <laughs> I might actually put it on Steam too, sell it for a dollar, and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm I'm actually going to continue to work on it because it currently only has six environments: um, a forest at day, a forest at night, an Arctic level, a desert, a backyard, and the moon. Oh, I saw that. This is aerial life. That's unicellular. All right, and it's organic. Anyways, and uh, it was it's kind of fun. Um, I plan on adding much more to it, making it look better, and it's actually kind of a test for something I want, I want to do later on. Uh, I want to do a, a, like a VR, not so much of a game, but a simulator, an environment simulator, um, that can be used for exposure therapy for people with phobias, you know, because I'm, I know quite a bit about that, uh, <laughs> so I figured that'd be kind of fun. So this was kind of a test project on that, and it's actually kind of hilarious. So, yeah, that's why I've been neglecting YouTube for weeks because I've been working on that literally non-stop and I was actually working on 3D modeling like five minutes ago before I turned this on uh, I was making something uh, oh yeah a spaceship model for another game idea I had thought up anyways I'm gonna start taking recommendations to go places um, starting with this oh, control V Ah, stupid question mark. Cool question mark, yes. It exists, right? It does exist. You know, I was working on 3D modeling for a, a spaceship for a, a thing I had. Um, wow. That is kind of cool. It's a diffuse nebula. Diffuse. Very thin and wispy. Actually, most nebulas are quite thin. Like, honestly, if you were in the middle of a nebula, you wouldn't necessarily notice you were. Um, because I, 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 I like it's like being in fog fog looks really thick but once you stand in it it doesn't look very thick around you um, same with nebulas like they're actually very thin they look dense because we're looking through light years and light years and light years of material but if you're in the middle of it it would look like you were in a clear open space with kind of a cloud around you depending on how big it was anyways no they're very lovely um, I love them Yes, yeah, so I was 3D modeling, and uh, my eyes actually hurt, but I figured I needed to do uh, a video, especially a space engine video, for you guys. So, here I am. And, um, good to go. I think that was actually my only recommendation for a place to go. Uh, so, I'm going to go to Canis Majoris, as in the star. I think I've been there. Uh... Maybe. Well, let's go there again, just because it's 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 a nice star. Um. I actually forget.
get its full name. One second, I need to I need to Wikipedia this. Um, Canis Majoris. There we go. Yeah, sorry, I'm kind of busy or I'm tired. Vy Canis. All right, I got it. It's been one of those days. Just one of those days. <laughs> Boom. Ah, look at that. All that convection. I wonder. No, not exposure. Ah, uh, no, not yet. I was hoping you'd be able to, like, see the, uh, the convection currents and stuff. I, I, I guess not. These stars are actually kind of cool. Um, it's like our sun. If you look at it up close, it has kind of a boiling pot thing, um, going on it. But, um,. Um, oh, what do you call it? Sorry, I'm reading something on YouTube quickly because I'm trying to get ideas. But uh, anyways, um, it has kind of like a boiling pot motif because it's these convection currents up through the um, like the plasma. And with larger stars, these convection currents are much bigger, and you don't really have a differentiated interior. Like the sun has a differentiated interior, like a, a nice core, uh, a nice little mantle-esque area, then a photosphere and all that. And, but with these stars, everything's kind of just like blob together. So it has a core, and then just like blob. Um, it, it's 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 actually quite fascinating. At least I think it is. I might be crazy. I don't know. I like stars. <sighs> I've actually gotten pretty good at 3D modeling recently. I've I was doing some modeling for um, some space endeavors. Like I was making 3D models of. Uh, it was like the engine interior of the rocket that I want to work on, and like the landing system. So I needed to like kind of uh, picture it in 3D, because like, that's how I visually operate. I really wish I had a 3D printer or access to a 3D printer, because I could like quick prototype so easily with that. There actually are companies where I can do that, um, but it costs money, and I don't have money <laughs> like at all, so. Actually, that isn't true. I, I actually can pay my bills this this month, so that's something. But on the topic of manufacturing, one of the questions I was asked about how do I feel about metamaterials in engineering, and um, that's actually a good question. I think they're interesting. I haven't looked into them too much. I know some of the optic ones, like um, experiments where they're trying to make kind of like invisibility cloak type things, mostly just for just to see how you know, light works, but there's also like acoustic ones that like bend and manipulate sound. Um, electronic ones are interesting because you can use them for uh, different types of like computer processing or computer modulate or like electronic modulation. It's they're actually very interesting. Um, I don't know terribly a lot of uh, much. I, I don't know much about them, but I do know roughly what they are and how they how they operate. It's like um, basically like cells of small materials that interact with whatever the hell they're interacting with. Like if it's light or sound, then they're usually a tuned size for the wavelengths. Or some oh I saw that. Or something. What time is it? It is one. So it's technically early for me. Yeah, I'm well adjusted, so I uh, I operate in the middle of the night. Um, I usually do the dishes around 4 a.m. and I go to sleep at around 7 a.m. and I wake up in the afternoon. That's just how I am. Well, it was actually originally a coping mechanism that's become just a habit. Yeah, I can tell by the shape of this planet. It has a high rate of spin. It's kind of bulging. It has moons. Lots of moons. Gas giants tend to have lots of moons. Gravity wells and whatnot. Uh, anyway, what kind of life are we looking at here? Um, it's organic, unicellular, and it's aerial. And it's pretty standard for a gas giant. Mostly hydrogen, helium, ammonia. No, wait, that's not ammonia. That's ammonia right there, the NH3. Uh, you almost got me there. It's like right, there's nitrogen and hydrogen and ammonia. 
Well, I'm not terribly like. Uh, I'm not really into it this episode. Eh, some of them just like that. Um, yeah. Some like a podcast name. Some are good. Some are bad. <laughs> but beyond that, um, not much has been happening. I've just been working nonstop on trying to make a game, and I actually got around to doing it. And I was like, ah, third time's the charm, I suppose. All right, go away. No. What what have we here? It's a red dwarf. Oh. Oh, I see, oh, I switched one on here. So we have two stars and a red dwarf. And one of the planets around the red dwarf has life. Unless this this is it. Ah, go away. This can't be it. No, this is the red dwarf. Wait a minute. Let's try landing on it. Something's seriously wrong here. No, this is it. Then where's the red dwarf, or the brown dwarf? Oh, thick atmosphere. See, all right. <laughs> I, I, okay, I, I, I get it. Wow, come on, space engine, don't do this to me. Oh, there we go. There we go. So that is what I was looking at. No, it's saying random star, but this is a, f a frozen titan. I'm confused. I am so confused. That the, this might be a glitch. The game hat does this sometimes to me. Red dwarf, frozen titan, orange dwarf. And where did it say brown dwarf? Or did I just make that up in my head? Because it's saying it's a random star. I can't actually get the information on this 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 thing. Ugh, I don't know. That's just a clog. It's just a glitch. Because yeah, see, I'm um, selected the frozen ice giant, but it's doing a random star thingy. I'm so confused. I, I don't know. I don't know. Let's go somewhere else. This this system's breaking me. <laughs> I should probably actually reinstall this um, just to kind of fix some of the bugs. Actually, when's the next update coming out? I should probably check on that. I think there's like a patch or something, but I'm not sure. I'm usually just told by somebody in the comments when a new one comes out, which is probably terrible. I, mean, I need to actually like do work. No, oh, well. I try. All right, what do we got going on here? Um, cold ice giant. So far, so good. And it has moons, one of which has life. And if I go info, it's broken still. No, wait, no, it's not. I have no idea. Anyways, um, it's unicellular, organic, subglacial. So we have life under ice. Kind of like Europa or any of the other ice moons. Moons. Actually, what's, what's happening recently? Uh, there's a mission going out to Mercury. Yeah, Mercury. It's a joint uh, JAXA ESA mission. And they were like, you know, hey, you can submit name ideas or a poem or something, or like something to write, you can send to it. And I wrote a poem for it because I always do that. Like, like whenever I have an option where it's like send your name or send a message out on the spacecraft, I always just do it just because I have like a collection of like I think four of them now or something like that, four or five. 
Um, if I have like Hayabusa 2, Osiris Rex, Insight, um, the, f the first Orion mission, I have my name on board that too. And now I'm on this this Mercury mission. It's like, it doesn't really do anything. It's just kind of fun. It's like whatever. I you know, I have the option. Why not? Why not take it? <laughs> A lot of fun. And that uh, quote unquote flat earther guy finally launched his rocket. I think he got to like 1300 feet. Uh, he didn't die, luckily. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to seeing him try his actual like space flight. Uh, he's 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 gonna use a raccoon, which is a uh, rocket balloon, which they're a proven technology. They're interesting. You basically you have a balloon that takes a rocket, boop, a rocket up to a certain altitude, and then you launch from there. Uh, I think Zero to Infinity is doing that too with their orbital, like their mini orbital rockets. They're gonna start doing that. But anyway, um, it's kind of cool. I'm still of the mind that he is not a flat earther because he made no mention of flat of being a flat earther until this year suspiciously around the time uh, crowdfunding for his rocket wasn't going very well and then he was like oh I believe the earth is flat and now I'm sponsored by research flat earth and they give me money and it's like yeah that's not suspicious at all and then he even made a comment where it's like he was like you know yeah sure I believe the earth is flat do I know it is no of course not that's why I'm gonna go and check which is basically code for I'm I know it's not flat but I'm giving myself an out so when I prove that it isn't flat I can be like oh well I I I never said one way or the other so he's not a flat earther like honestly he isn't but he's I don't know I I, I couldn't bring myself to scamming flat earthers out of money I don't like them but I wouldn't scam them out of money cuz just I don't know. I just I, I don't I don't I don't operate that way. All right, mostly carbon dioxide, a bit of oxygen, sulfur dioxide, argon, carbon mon oh carbon monoxide, nitrogen, and neon. Carbon monoxide sucks. This is kind of a nice little planet, though. I say that myself. Nice little ring system. It's unicellular terrestrial, so we have land-based microbes. The best kind of microbes. Actually, no. I personally like. Uh, aquatic microbes. You know, the amoeba is kind of found in everything from soil to water. They're just they're everywhere. Those crazy things. Hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah, I need more to talk about. Like, I kind of looked up some metamaterial information, but I couldn't really find anything that was kind of jumping out at me, so. Oh well. Again, I find them interesting, I just don't know too much about them. This looks very familiar. Like, I've seen planets like this very often. The rings and the, the broken up seas. It's a very nice aesthetic. I, I like planets like this. But really, I really hope uh, later on they add more planet diversity. Like, more... Because like, I know all these planets are just made procedurally. But more... Um, starting points, basically, like, like more stuff to draw on to make more diverse planets. That's a very... Well, actually, it's fairly oxygen-rich, too. It's more oxygen than our atmosphere. Nitrogen, a lot of stuff. Actually, a fairly complex atmosphere, too. Kind of like our atmosphere is very complex. Go away. Unicellular, and it's all marine life. Huh. How old is it? Alright. Hmm. Oh, also Earth Day's coming up next month. On um, April 22nd, I think. Sunday. That's always fun. I love Earth Day. <coughs> I'm gonna... I always fly my Earth flag, which I always fly. And I'm probably gonna go down, my, down to my river and pick up garbage. Which I should probably just do anyways, because, well, it's always nice to do. But Earth Day's a great day to do it. Seriously, save the earth, <laughs> save the environment. I'm fond of the environment. Actually, um, I replaced all my lights with LED light bulbs, just 
because it's you know good for the environment. But the power savings are great, and like they don't heat up. It's it's amazing. I have a lamp on my desk that I have a LED light bulb in, and it looks like a normal light bulb, and it can be on for hours and hours and hours. And if you touch the light bulb, it feels modestly warm, but that's it. It doesn't like heat up to burning like, awfulness. Incandescent lights suck. Like they, honestly, they do. After going LED, I just I can never go back to incandescent. Well, anyways, that's 20 minutes of hearing me kind of mentally burned out talking about things and being kind of boring. I apologize, but the next episode should be more interesting. Um, if you have ideas for places to go, let me know, or topics to talk about, always good. I'll be back again, hopefully six, seven days. I try to leave about a week between episodes, and uh, I'll probably do some other stuff too in between. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and space.